Welcome back to AP Psychology in under 3 minutes. No time for intros, let's get into it. Right now is where we start our 5 video deep dive into the science behind memory. This is video number 1. So let me explain the basic idea here. Say something happens in front of you. Your sensory memory is the initial sensory information stored in your memory for a few milliseconds to a few seconds. This sensory memory will include the echoic memory for audio senses and the iconic memory for visual senses. Now if you were to pay attention to any of these senses, that is when the information goes into the short-term memory. The senses that don't get any attention are forgotten. This information will last in the short-term memory for 15 to 30 seconds. However, for information to be passed into the long-term memory, you have to rehearse it. And I'm not talking about basic maintenance rehearsal that is just repeating the info out loud or in your head. I'm talking about elaborative rehearsal, where you link the info with meaning, existing knowledge, or associations. If you successfully do that, the info will get transferred into your long-term memory, where it will stay a few days up to your entire life. Of course, if you didn't rehearse, you would just forget the info. This is known as the multi-store memory model. It's a very old model that does oversimplify quite a bit. Let's look at a few newer models that add some useful details to this one. The working memory model essentially keeps the multi-store model, but expands on the short-term memory part of it. Basically, all it does is explain a central executive as the control center of short-term memory that will direct audio info to go to the phonological loop and spatial info to the visuospatial sketch pad, where in both places the info will be held and rehearsed in an attempt to go to long-term memory. The levels of processing model introduced a hierarchy on how info is processed deeper, saying that semantic does better than phonemic and structural. So which one of these models are correct? The answer is, actually all of them for the most part. Memory is obviously a lot more complex than simple diagrams, which is why there is five different videos in AP Psychology directed to it. But these models are a great way to understand the basic part of them. Oh, and before I forget, long-term potentiation is the biological reason for why information goes from short-term to long-term memory. It is caused by two neurons firing together to make it more efficient. Long-term potentiation is the entire reason the long-term memory can exist. But really quickly, let's zoom into the long-term memory. Let's talk about the different types of memories stored here. Explicit memory is known as declarative. It houses the semantic memory, which houses facts and general knowledge, and the episodic memory, which houses personal experiences and events. Implicit memory is known as non-declarative. It has in it the procedural memory, which houses skills and habits, and it also has other implicit stuff like priming. Finally, even though it isn't one of the two major types of long-term memory, perspective memory houses all the memories of what you plan to do in the future. And that's it. On the screen now are some AP style questions for this topic. Pause now. I'll put the answers on the screen now. I will see you in the next one.